It's June 20th, 2022. One year ago today, I skied the Mears Snowfield on Mount Rainier with my friends Alec and Jonah. And today, one year later, I'm back at Mount Rainier with my friend Scott. And this time we're going for the full summit and ski descent via the Fear Finger. And as you can see, the weather right now is not that inviting. I think we're just in a fog. We're gonna get going here probably in the next hour or two. And I think we're gonna get a couple hundred feet up and we're gonna be above it and we're gonna have sunny skies the rest of the time. We have perfect weather forecasted. Scott and I wanted to do this in May and the weather just didn't cooperate. It's been the wettest spring in Washington in what I read is 75 years. Um, and starting today is when summer is gonna start and it's supposed to be really nice. Um, up where we're gonna camp, I think it's only supposed to be a low of like 33 or 35 degrees and then tomorrow morning in the 20s at the summit. So we could be in for a real treat. As long as we don't fall into a crevasse or slide down the fear finger because it's unexpectedly icy, which I don't think it will be. I'm really excited. I've been thinking about this every day for a year. Ever since I got that first taste of Rainier, I've never been able to uh, stop thinking about it. So we're at Paradise. First problem has been solved. Scott had a broken binding. We fixed it. It wasn't broken, it was misconfigured. <laughs> <laughs> Mountains peeking through the clouds back there. We're getting some glimpses of the mountain. The clouds are starting to break up. Currently, it looks like Mordor up there. <laughs> but the, the forecast says by this afternoon it's supposed to be clear skies. So we're holding the weathermen accountable. Open up. Scott's got his little thong harness. It's all lazy. <laughs> About to go on to our first glacier of the trip. The clouds have finally broke. Have a nice view. Our whole route. It is super hot out here. I'm like swimming in my own sweat right now. All right, kind of on the home stretch to where we're gonna camp. Not Adams. Standing tall back there. You see Mount St. Helens, and we just got a face full of Rainier in front of us. It's pretty cool. Your finger over there, that's tomorrow's line. Your thumb. Some tasty looking snowfield, I don't know what it's called. The summit's way up there, we can't see the summit. We were just scoping out our route for the morning because we're gonna have to cross the Wilson Glacier in the dark. And um, I think we got it figured out. There's already a skin track on the other side of this crevasse here, and we can see it go all the way up to just below the finger, except then it branches off over there. So we're just gonna follow that skin track and then 
we're, instead of going where it goes over there is that's where we'll go up to the finger but once we get to that point it's super clean so um, makes me feel a lot better that we not only know where we're gonna go when we go in the dark is is we actually have a track to follow so that'll be nice just woke up or I guess I'm just getting myself going because I didn't really sleep but clear skies it's not too cold out there's no wind so I think we have about as good of conditions as we could hope for to climb 5,000 feet to the summit this morning probably gonna get going in the next 40-45 minutes all right You can see the summit up there. We just finished a pretty steep snow climb. Sketchy trees. Yeah, we had to walk over or in between two pretty large crevasses. All right, at about uh, probably between 12,800 and 13,000 feet, Scott was getting buried by the altitude. So I, I might be pushing up to the summit by myself because uh, I still feel okay. Uh, but final stretch, final 1,500 feet ish. Not super sure. Team of three ahead of me that put in a nice path that I can follow, so I shouldn't have to worry about unknowingly walking onto a crevasse. I can just follow their footsteps. This is a huge crevasse and two snow bridges that I am not about to cross. I'm just gonna follow these footprints. <laughs> I am just below the summit, probably two or three hundred more feet. But holy shit. I am just absolutely taking like ten steps and then stopping for like thirty seconds. It's brutal. I mean the fact that I just had COVID doesn't help. The fact that I didn't sleep doesn't help. Uh, but at least there's only a few hundred more feet. I thought that I thought it would take me 10 minutes, but the way I'm going, it might take me 20. <laughs> got the summit, <coughs> summit right here. This is really cool, really special to me. I've been thinking about this every day for the last year, and I'm the only person summit right now. There's nobody else up here, so that's pretty cool. I'm going to transition quickly because it's pretty cold and it's a lot later than I wanted to be transitioning. Uh, we just want to go to the so we're set. Or let's go ski.
This is probably going to take the cake for the best corner I've skied. It's... This way! This way! This way! Down from the upper mountain, safe and sound. The corn in the fear finger was so good it was almost unbelievable. And as soon as we got out of the fear finger, the snow turns their sticky mashed potatoes. But on a 9,000 foot ski descent, you can't get you can't get it good the entire way. You get a little bit of everything, and we definitely got that. Super grateful for the mountain for letting us through safely. Definitely didn't come without its dangerous situations. We're back to the town. It's done.